Marcy and I have uh, multiple businesses. We don't get to work in the same office every day, but we do have a, a, a practice that we put into our company every day we walk into the office, as well as the way we greet every client that comes in to see us and potential client at meetings. Oftentimes people walk into our company and they put their hand out, we just go like this. And we see the, the meetings, the R, the feel, the vibration of meetings tend to change from the outset uh, and have favorable outcomes that benefit all parties. So give more hugs. Um, I'd like to turn over, we'll kind of go back and forth on some slides and uh, give you a, a peek into our past and what we do for a living and how we're both trying to change the world together through sacred commerce. So to my wife, Marcy. So first I just want to thank uh, John and Samantha and Dan for hosting us. Um, this is a real gift for us all to come together. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite the serial entrepreneur. Um, I started <laughs> about over 30 years ago when I was two. Um, and my girlfriend gave me the book Living in the Light, which was a real aha moment for me. I kind of went like, whoa, okay, there's more than what we see. And subsequent to that, um, two people came into my, li my life uh, when I was still in my teens. One was the artist Peter Max. How many of you have seen Peter's uh, classic love image and art? Uh, the second was the founder of Aveda. How many of you know Aveda? And both Horst and Peter uh, really spoke to me intuitively in that they were following their hearts. If you've ever seen Peter paint, it's just love on the canvas. He absolutely loves, and he's in his mid-70s, late 70s, and he's still painting every day. Um, Horst, who unfortunately passed away last year, was the embodiment of service and really uh, loved everything that he did. He was like a, a mad scientist in his lab. Uh, so both of them played a big and inf influential role on me, and I co-founded a school that originally was called Gulliver's Living and Learning Center, which was inspired by Gulliver's travels, that Gulliver went on this journey of self-realization and discovery. And like Gulliver, we created a school to take people on this journey, this journey really that is within, and started with food, because of course food is sort of that you know, in, the, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, your sort of basic, first basic need, where uh, food is energy, just like we all are energy. So you've all heard, you are what you eat. So that became kind of the first stepping stone for me uh, to help take people on this journey. And that ultimately segued into a brand called Under the Canopy, which I started in 1996, the concept being, that going from food to, again, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, shelter and protection, that fashion was actually an incredibly powerful vehicle for transformation because people aren't as scared of it as they are of food. You don't have to change your life to actually wear a great dress or a great jacket. And so to me, I thought about, well, can I translate the food and the beauty into fashion? And I coined the term eco-fashion to take people on this journey and ultimately break the stigma that there were two dichotomous worlds, that you couldn't be stylish and conscious. And there was this you know, bias or stigma that if you were fashion forward, you were materialistic and all you cared about was the way you look, and yet, if you were conscious and you were humanitarian and you cared about the environment and ecology, that you couldn't look good. So in creating Under the Canopy, the idea was how do we redefine what good business is and love our mother in a really cute and stylish way, right? And um, so it, as in being that entrepreneur, for me, it was about redefining what good business is. And I'm sure you've all heard the people, planet, profit, passion, and purpose, right? Those were the five Ps of, and the fundamentals of everything that I've ever done. Um, love, I mean, I can say I love love, right? Because love is the common thread in all of my businesses. And like water for chocolate to me, if I could just infuse love into fashion where people could be, they could buy and support and wear something because it spoke to them on a very visceral level, on a visual level. And that's why I love to 
create uh, design because if you can appeal to somebody on the surface and then take them deeper and then take them on the journey, then people will take those steps forward when they're ready, as they're ready, but at the end of the day, intuitively, it's like planting a seed. If you cultivate it, it ultimately will grow. And so um, it's been a really exciting process of taking people into the fashion world in, and redefining good business. And what I've learned is, you know, again, and we've heard this before today, it's about this and that. If you can give people everything that they want in business in the context of if it's food, it has to taste good. If it's fashion, it has to look good but then embed into it that value add, that, that extra layer that touches people on every level. And at the core, that level is love. So really, you know, these are just some of the principles you know, around a values-driven business that, you know, when you're adding value, it really does start at the source. It starts at saying, you know, how do we build from within and redefine what beauty is and what purpose is? And we've kind of lost that along the way as fashion especially has become somewhat ubiquitous in the world as everything's made in China and everything looks you know, similar, right? So, you know, my mission was to break the stigma of sustainable fashion, where we could coexist with nature, with the plant kingdom, because we have a symbiotic relationship, you know, with the environment. I mean, under the canopy, the name is uh, inspired by the premise that we all live under the canopy of the planet's ecosystem together. And for those of you who visited the rainforests of the world, you know the canopy is the top layer of the rainforest. And under the canopy, there's more life than anywhere else in the world. And it's that life that provides the oxygen that we as humanity depend on to breathe. We coexist with our environment. We're not against it, we're, it's not, we're not here to deplete it and destroy it, we're here to protect it and build it and coexist and love it. And so if you can think of business as an amazing, powerfully, powerful vehicle for transformation, that when we embed these values in, we are redefining what good business is. And so in the context of fashion, it's about looking good, feeling good, and doing good. And as an entrepreneur, I say, wow, you know, work is love made visible. This is a, how many of you have heard that quote from the prophet Khalil Gibran, right? So I always say, wow, I can do what I love, make money, and change the world. Check, check, check. Sign me up for that, right? <laughs> so this is where it all starts, just like at our source, right? I mean, you know, the typical fashion companies they go and they source at a, at a factory and the factory works backwards. For me, I'm like, well, if we're gonna redefine business, if we're gonna shift the paradigm, we have to start at the source. We have to tap into our gut and follow our heart and our soul, like water for chocolate, going to the beginning and building into our products that love. So by going to the farms and working with farmers who we share core values and we build together and we redefine what a business or supply chain model looks like so that it's win-win. It's not me against you. It's not me taking from you. It's me and you. How do we grow together? How do we win together? How do we share that love across the board and then bring that to life in a finished product? And that's why I love consumer products so much because at the end of the day, we want to create win, 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 you know? We want the farmers and the factory workers, I mean, you know, unfortunately, many Americans forget and they think their clothing is growing in the department store and don't realize that people's lives are being affected, our fellow humanity, you know? I mean, one of the reasons I got into cotton, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, cotton is one of the leading causes of air and water pollution. And, um, you know, less than 3% of the world's agriculture is cotton, but over 20% of the most harmful insecticides and up to 10% of the most carcinogenic pesticides are being used on the conventional cotton industry. That doesn't even include the chlorine bleaches, formaldehyde, heavy metals, and all the things added into cotton. So the farmers' lives are being affected 
the factory workers' lives are being affected as we push them down the supply chain as if they don't matter. And at the end of the day, as you know, many of the fashion brands, and especially in fast fashion, have make, are making more and more money, those people across the world that are part of our family can't even sustain their livelihoods. And you can Google this. Every half an hour in India, a conventional cotton farmer is actually committing suicide now. They're getting caught on what we call the pesticide treadmill, and they're committing suicide by actually drinking pesticides. This is not working. Business as usual. We have to redefine business, and we have to connect and partner with our sources and with our source. And you know, as a Henry Crown Fellow of the Aspen Institute, one of the most telling things, that was kind of an eye-opening moment for me, was I have amazing business leaders in my class and seeing in my, in my program and seeing that people are walking around with two sets of values, like what is that about? They have their professional values where they'll do whatever they need to do to make money and then they have their personal values. We're like, I would never do that in my home or to my family or to my children. And the way we achieve balance in life and true love with each other to love and be loved and create one happy, healthy, peaceful, harmonious world is to reconcile those values and realize that we need alignment in our professional and our personal values. So I will let Eric now, um, well, actually last slide is just to show you. Um, That's this our is, bed. <laughs> this is actually just a little sampling of how my brand has come to life on the shelves of major retailers. So that bed in the top right corner, that bed is actually called the lover. And that lover bed is in all 1,300 Bed Bath & Beyond stores right now and online. And it's a bunch of love letters that I wrote to Eric and words like love evolution and love is all you need. And you know, where there's love, there is life. And it's, they just blasted out into 22 million households in their May circular, the lover bed, they featured it. Now they might not even know what's hitting them. <laughs> they might just think it's great design. But there is real true love energy in that bed. And bloggers all over the US are blogging the Lover Infinity Pillow and the Follow Your Heart Pillow and the Love is All You Need and the Love is the New Black uh, from our apparel collection are being picked up in major fashion magazines. And there's something resonating, right? I mean, these are just some of our more literal products, but all of our products are you know, infused with lots and lots of love. So this is just how I brought my brand to life. Macy's is also picking up the lover bed in August. So this is not a little niche thing. This is resonating and it's just the beginning, so. Thank you. So you sleep a, a third of your life, as you all know, and to have bedding that has words with love symbols and beautiful sayings on them is an awesome way to, uh, to touch people, so thank you. Um, this is the face of a, of a humble guy that's not afraid to use the four-letter word love in business every day, not afraid to use it with his wife every day or his kids or his coworkers. I say love all the time, and at our company, I tell people I love them all the time. I tell our clients, once we get friendly enough, that I love them too. It's an amazing way to connect, so I'm, I'm very proud about that four-letter word. Um, just a real snippet of my background, I know we're probably running tight for time, but I I actually was born in 1970, lived in an ashram in Boston, Massachusetts as a young flower child, hippie child, studying meditation, sacred geometry, learning about the plant kingdom and spirituality in general. So I've got a little bit of an esoteric upbringing that um, didn't necessarily prepare me for the business world, uh, but certainly prepared me to be a loving business person. In, uh, in college, um, I didn't necessarily study business, but right after college, I went to Wall Street and learned how finance works and how business works and how capitalism works. I did that on purpose so I could create a company and be in business understanding how the other vibration of capitalism can work with the system of love around commerce and sacred commerce. In uh, 2002, I created the brand Steez, which was the first organic uh, soft drink fair trade tea brand in the United States. And really, the idea behind the concept was, similar to Marcy, wanted to make big changes. And I said, why can't somebody make soda organic and make it righteous and make it good and maybe put a botanical-like tea in and make it a little bit healthy? And that was my premise. And 15 years later, Steez is the largest organic soft drink and tea brand that's privately owned in the US today. I'm very proud of it. And uh, if you can go to the next slide. 
And uh, since the, uh, the Steez experience, I've had the ability to create another business model called MetaBrand, which is an Edison, New Jersey-based uh, business company that literally surrounds entrepreneurs and brands with an outsourced model of operations, with marketing, with sales and distribution strategy. We provide capital, debt financing, and full service formulation work in our R&D lab, our innovation center in Edison. We have 20 employees and over 50 consultants that make up our practice. It's the largest practice of natural channel industry consultants that are kind of in one, one home that basically are used to deploy and serve young brands that want to create the next Steez or the next Under the Canopy or the next product that you'd see in Whole Foods Market. Our concept is to really support them as much as they need and really infuse the five Ps that Marcy said, you know, coming off the quadruple bottom line, people, planet, you know, ethical profits and, uh, and purpose. We're really trying to also instill a passion and a mindset of passion in the co-founders and founders we get to work with. The Runa brand's a great example. Um, their passion's all about providing jobs in Ecuador in the rainforest for us so that the farmers don't have to cut down trees for a living. They can actually grow guayusa plants and grow tea. And it's a very sustainable lifestyle, and we've seen the positive change it's made. So very proud of that. Thank you. So this is an article that uh, proves out a little bit of the synchronicity. We've heard the word synchronicity mentioned a couple of times in past presentations today in our life. I'm sure many of you that are in the flow, tuned in, tapped in, turned on, have some synchronicity going on in your life. You wonder how things line up continually just for the positive and events just seem to unfold beautifully like a flower. This is kind of an everyday occurrence in our life since we met uh, 12 years ago. Uh, this is an article that we both didn't expect to be written up in, but coincidentally were featured in back in 2008, I believe. But in 2007, synchronistically, after just being friends in the industry, we were both honored with a dual award of being uh, two of the most sustainable businesses in the natural products industry. Through a series of events, over the next four or five years, we kept having to be in front of each other in business settings and in business meetings. And just a show of hands here, um, how many people in the room believe that they're really a spirit or a soul living in a physical body experiencing this reality? Awesome, awesome. How many people believe in reincarnation? Awesome. How many people believe in soul families, that souls travel together because they love each other so much they want to stick together in incarnations? Awesome. How many people have heard of twin flames? Woohoo. So a twin flame is a special kind of soul that we believe it incarnates in a physical lifetime and splits off into a masculine and feminine version of itself, and it spends that lifetime finding itself through synchronicity. Once it finds itself, the one plus one equal 11. That power of 11 in our life is the most powerful number. It gives us the ability to have 11 times the power to co-create everything we set our intent on, and we could prove it. I've got boxes of receipts and examples that someday we'll share publicly in a book, maybe a documentary, about the power of twin flames that come together. So we're, we're very honored and we're very blessed to be uh, in business together and being family together and I will hand it off to you to take them through the rest so we so we went on a <laughs> we went out on a business dinner in 2010 after knowing each other for years having been featured an entrepreneur on the stage getting awards together but never looked into each other's eyes and that moment of life change happened when all of a sudden our souls connected and we realized the power of love. Wow. It was as if, you know, it's like the law of creation and the vesica Pisces and the cells that come together and cr create something much bigger. Twin and, flames unite. <laughs> yeah, two, two flames igniting in one that created an exponential ripple effect and all of a sudden our vision to mainstream consciousness and to make it cool sort of was like exponential that much bigger when we came together as a couple. Um, so we started getting featured in all kinds of places and magazines as, you know, a cool couple. But really, the only thing that's cool about what we do is that we're just bringing love into the world. I mean, that's our mission, you know? And together, when I learned that that's his and he learned that that was mine, it was like there was no stopping us. Our ability to co-create was infinitely limitless. I mean, just amazing. We want to make love the new cool. <laughs> so we decided to birth a brand together, how apropos and how appropriate for us to do that. So I Am is our uh, brand, I Am Enlightened Creations. It's really a platform for consciousness, but it's really a brand that transforms you immediately with products. And we started this company almost three years ago. It's sold in most Whole Foods and Sprouts across the country. Really, the power of the brand comes with the words I Am. We believe they're two of the most powerful words ever voiced on this earth, and you can find it in scripture and in testament. In many cultures, the words I Am fill in the rest are what you are. 
And uh, just as a side note, as a little kid, I once read a book, uh, seven years old, of a girl that had stage four terminal cancer. And she had someone come visit her that taught her about the power of I am. And she talked to all the cells in her body over a couple of days and told them how powerful they were and that they were, they I am, going to eat all the cancer. And within a week, our entire body was gone of cancer and cleaned. It was a real story. It was in General Hospital in Boston. That's where I grew up, so I knew. And I said to myself one night, why can't I talk to all the cells in my body and tell them we are, I am, never gonna get sick? And I did it. And I'm 44 years old. I've never been sick in my entire life. I've never had a fever. I've never had a cold. I've never had anything. I test it. I talk to people that are sick. I let them breathe on me. I don't get sick. My body can't physically get sick. And that's the power of I am. 44 years. <laughs> so we took some other es esoteric modalities around love and consciousness and vibration and frequency and plant wisdom and infused it into the brand I am. And you can see products here today you'll have in your gift bags are herbal, Ayurvedic, and Chinese um, little supplements. They're liquid. They, fax, they act very fast in your body to help transform your mood, whether it's energy or focus or better sleep or relaxation, as well as our aromatherapy, Miss, which I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. So um, just to wrap up, just to say the pillars of business to us in terms of infusing love, consciousness, really are grounded in collaboration, innovation, education, inspiration. How many of you know what today is? Probably all know that it's a day to love, right? But that's something even more. Today is Global Wellness Day. And this was started by the spa and hospitality industry. Go online and go see all the amazing things going on all over the world. Wellness is something we all want, we deserve to thrive, right? Like the birds flying in unity, the, sw the f fish that are swimming in schools. We are, our health of our planet and our humanity depend on our collective consciousness to redefine the world that we live in. And so we're calling this the eco-renaissance. And the eco-renaissance is really built on creativity, consciousness, collaboration, community, and connection. And we all love love, and we welcome all of you to talk to us after. But thank you so much for all being here and being a part of this shift in consciousness. Love you.